Hi there, my name is Stefano, and I'm designing a game. We're calling it Starlight Express for now, and on this first official episode of our devlog series, I'll be telling you a little bit about it. In today's exciting episode, we're going to start at the beginning and talk a little bit about where the idea for the game came from and some of the gameplay mechanics I wanted to explore and how we're going about implementing them. Like I said in the intro, the game is a transport company management sim set in a space station. Or if you want to sound more marketable and come across like a douche, it's Stardew Valley meets Mass Effect. I love Star Trek, and I have a particular fondness for Deep Space Nine. Unlike the previous series, where the characters would hop around the galaxy, f around with new life and new civilizations, and boldly fly off into the sunset, or the space sunset, towards their next adventure, this cast of characters was stuck on a space station, and they had to deal with the decisions they made and live out the consequences. They also had snazzier uniforms and jadzia decks. One day, I got to thinking, what would a Deep Space Nine game be like? My first thought was that it might look something like Airline Tycoon, a game that came out in 98 by German developer Spellbound Entertainment. You'd run your airline and compete with three other tycoons in a wacky airport full of weird characters. Or maybe Startopia, a game from 2001 by Mucky Foot Productions where you have to build and manage a space station. My second thought was that it might be a little bit like Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley where, like Commander Sisko, the player has a daily routine in their job, but what we're really there for is the relationships they gradually build with the community around them. So yeah, what if Harvest Moon but interplanetary shipping company instead of farming? The appeal of games like that, for me at least, is the chill vibe and a gameplay loop that lulls you into a comfortable routine. Wake up, water the crops, pet the dog, milk the cow, see if the chickens could be bothered to lay any eggs today, and go into town and try and romance your strumpet of choice. Or himbo of choice if you had the girl version. But what if we were to subvert that? What if you had to consider who you're shipping your products to and what your blushing bride-to-be thought about who you do business with? What if your actions had an effect on the community around you? As I was noodling around with this idea, I remembered Ken Levine's great GDC talk on narrative Legos and how we can build systemic, reusable narratives in video games. Basically, rather than create one big linear plot for your game, you build systems of wants and needs and passions for the characters, and you let the player explore these systems freely, creating your own story each time. Of course, I'm criminally oversimplifying it, so I highly recommend you check out the talk. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so we have an idea for a pretty straightforward primary gameplay loop, and a pretty exciting, if a little intimidating idea for a second, more socially themed gameplay loop. Dare we go for a third? We got everyday chores and smooching aliens? Actually, before we go on, I suppose I'd better explain what a gameplay loop is. I first heard the term in Yahtzee Croshaw's Dev Diary series which is a must-watch for anyone who is into game design. He vows to make 12 games in 12 months and chronicles his attempt. I'll leave a link in the description. He's currently on season two, making a sci-fi transport game, borrowing heavily from a farming sim, which I assure you is completely different to my sci-fi transport game. Borrowing heavily from a farming sim? Fuck it, I'll just let him explain it. I have this mad idea that some people might take advice from me, and if there's only one piece of advice I'd like taken away from this entire series, it's this. Focus on the primary gameplay loop. 
The primary gameplay loop, as I understand it, refers to what you want the player to be trying to achieve on a second-by-second -second basis. So in something like Doom, this would be move around, shoot monsters. Or in Pac-Man, it's eat pills, avoid ghosts. Most games will also have a secondary loop, which is what you're trying to achieve from minute to minute, and a tertiary loop for hour to hour, roughly speaking. So the secondary loop of Pac-Man would be eating every pill in the level. The tertiary loop would be beating enough levels to get a high score. And that's as deep as Pac-Man gets. But other games have even more loops. You can have as many layers as you like, but ultimately they all come down to the constant repetition of a primary loop. It needn't necessarily be seconds long, either. If you're making something more cerebral, business sim, turn-based strategy, you know, something menu-driven, you can expect a higher attention span from the target audience and your primary loop can spread out a bit. But even then, it's perfectly possible to make the mere act of navigating a menu and pressing buttons fun and engaging. Look at Persona 5 for a crash course in that. But I digress. Your task as a game designer is to make sure that the primary loop is fun and or engaging. So yeah, what about the uh, third loop for Starlight Express? Well, I don't want to spoil it too much because I'm also not entirely sure that what I consider to be the game's tertiary loop isn't just the ending sequence. It's a bit like Fable 3 or Mass Effect 2 in that respect. And there'll be plenty of time for that later, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But going back to the primary loop for a second, being in charge of the shipping manifest and scheduling runs while your pilots go off and have all the fun doesn't sound like the most exciting game mechanic. Granted, we didn't set out to make an adrenaline-fueled, action-packed, no-holds-barred thrill ride, but we also don't want to bore the player to death. Something I personally struggle with these kinds of games, but then I do have a severe case of attention deficit disorder, so I might not be the best gauge for that. Anyway, our solution was to introduce a little microgame or two into the mix, like lockpicking in Skyrim or the hacking in Bioshock. Max, one of our more handsome devs, has already come up with a prototype for one of these. We just gotta make sure it's nice and juicy, but we'll leave that for another episode. Having the player be in charge of ship maintenance as well as company management seems like a decent start to figuring out our primary gameplay loop. So yeah, that was episode one. Yay! Next time we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, secondary gameplay loop and the social mechanics. Possibly out of spite. As ever, don't forget to like and subscribe. I, uh, I die a little bit inside every time I have to say that, so please don't make me do so in vain. I do, however, enjoy remote human interaction, so leave a comment. Hit us up on Twitter, join us on Discord, where we gush about games we love. And every so often, hold an art contest, as well as other stuff. And don't forget to check out Jumping Jacks for free on Steam. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.